station. I am Daniel Morgan, Brigadier General of the Continental Army. Join the militia and fight with us against British tyranny. Loyal subjects, join us, the British Legion, in driving out your rebel oppressors. I am Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton of the British Army, and I will lead you in rooting out this rebellion in the Carolinas. We must push Morgan and his patriots. The enemy seems resolved to force us to action. Just hold up your head. Three fires and you are free. Okay, this is the encampments uh, of Washington's army around Georgetown. I mean, this is the encampments of Washington's army around Yorktown. The soldiers must have had to sleep in these tents. where it needs to be. Paper crushes around the ball so the ball don't roll out. There you go. Bring the rammer back out, put it back in the bands, turn it, and shoulder. This is what I want you to do in 15 seconds. Take grenade! Begin! Fire! <laughs> Battlefield, you get one command, prime it alone. I'm gonna try and load this thing in 15 seconds. Shoulder the weapon. So hopefully about 15 seconds to get back to this position right here. Take ready. Take in. Hey. Bring it back there and you're ready to do it all over again. All right, guys. The soldier in those tents is from the lower class. His pay, even if he could send it home, wouldn't support a family. And even though most people lived and worked on farms, doesn't mean they own the property they work. So if he goes to war and the family left behind can't bring in a crop, there's no money for rent, no money for taxes or destitutes. So you're always going to have some falling off. So they will feed them. They'll give them medical care. In exchange, they'll do things like laundry and mending that will help out the army, free the men up for other duties. Uh, but they don't have tents for them. So that lean-to you see over there, that's typical of the crude shelters the families might be in. So uh, they're roughing it to say the least. If they had other options, they would not be following the army. So, pretty pretty rough existence all around. Do you guys have any questions uh, about the kitchen? And I'm going to throw aside, throw that in the basket, and I'm going to use those implements to operate on this one, and that one, and that one, and that one, as you come to see me. So now, uh, is it any wonder in your mind um, why, let's take the number of casualties during the uh, continental, uh, on the continental side during the war. There were tw about 26,000 continental casualties. Out of that 26,000, only about six or 6,500 thereabouts, we can, by gosh, no doubt in my military mind, they lost their lives on the battlefield. That was what happened. Everything else was a result of this in unfolding scenario that you can see now. Because what's going to happen, before I send you to the hospital to convalesce, I'm going to irrigate that uh, wound that I just extracted that musket ball from. And is it shift change, boss? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to irrigate that area with this uh, widely known uh, household cleaning agent. And I'll turn this over to my sergeant, who is wiser and much more knowledgeable, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. to explain to you why. And these are great. Do we get, we've just gotten into, we know, they know what causes us to become sick. They knew who I am. 
No surgeries yet. And uh, we haven't. I'm just. We're in the middle of surgery now. We have just extracted the musket ball, oh. and now I'm cleaning because, golly gee whiz, I want to prevent that horrible miasma from happening. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so what that is bad it? Bad smell. Vinegar. Yeah, Thank it's you. vinegar. That's right. Let's be honest, we thought it was a urine sample. Raise your hand. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's vinegar, all right? So why vinegar on my table? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guys, I had this thing in 18th century. Uh, did we talk about malaria yet? Yes. yes. Uh, some of the folks know what malaria is. Yeah, so, so for you folks... They joined us just late. All right, so for you folks that came up late, malaria we know is caused by a mosquito, but the word to them actually means bad air. So when things don't smell right, it's unhealthy for you. And uh, so when you talk about malaria, bad air coming from the marsh, that's one place, but you're gonna hear terms like vapors, miasma, kluvia, you know, noxious odors coming from wherever. And when you have that stuff, they're breaking out the vinegar. You wanna drink some water, it smells a little rough, they're gonna put vinegar in it. Um, you wanna clean something up that smells bad, they're gonna use vinegar. Some armies in history apparently use vinegar in wounds, they found the wounds healed better. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. What's the reason for that? It's an antiseptic. Yeah, because yeah, I think I heard a, I heard a bunch of things there, but yeah, mm. the stuff is uh, acidic. And the acidity of vinegar will actually kill some bacteria. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's pretty good stuff if you got it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So uh, the only surgery we talked about was bullet extraction. So we leave the wound open, might pack it with some uh, lint. You know, take some linen, shred it apart, thread by thread, make a Almost looks like a cotton ball sticking in there to absorb the fluid. And we'll leave that like that for a while. I'm not sure. This last, I hope he didn't leave any tools inside anyway. Where is it? Man, these guys got stuff everywhere. I can't even find what I'm looking for. This stuff right here. Did you talk about this yet? Anybody recognize this from their youth? Castor oil. Mm -hmm. Castor oil. So if they give you castor oil, guess what you're going to get? <laughs> That's right. You're the doctor. You can say that stuff here. I just gave you diarrhea on purpose, looseness of the bowels, whatever you want to call it, right? How you guys feel about that? Who thinks that sounds like a great idea? Who thinks that sounds like a terrible idea? But see, for me, this was very simple. You came over here, you said something in your bowels was making you feel bad, then what's the obvious move for me? Get that stuff out of your bowels, that's right. In fact, when you have diarrhea naturally, what's your body trying to do? Okay, so what's wrong with me doing it then? Okay, this is the highest ranking officer's tent in the uh, Army and Canton. Right here it has Lieutenant Colonel Clark and his suit hung up there. So we've traveled from Jamestown to see the first settlements. And then we were in Colonial Williamsburg, one of the first capitals. And then now we're in Yorktown to see how we became a nation free from Britain. And this is close to where the Battle of Yorktown took place, behind those bunkers, shooting at the British. So we've learned the history of America, and uh, that every, every nation and every people group has uh, precious worth and uh, value. And war, war is never good. Uh, there are solutions to problems that don't need to involve war. The greed of men cause war and fighting, James chapter 4. But the peace of God works through Jesus Christ and love and forgiveness. So we stand on this battlefield remembering. This is some of the first scenes of the Battle of Yorktown, the battle that ended the Revolutionary War. George Washington was the first to break ground here and to dig the ditches whereby his men could hide the guns and the cannons. And they would fire from below, behind, hidden behind these ditches. And they would fire into these open fields where the British encampments were behind me, behind the walls. And this was the first opening shots of the final battle of the Revolutionary War. Now, 
when the British had encamped here with General uh, Cornwallis, uh, they threatened to overtake Virginia, but then uh, General George Washington had all of his troops, the bulk of the American troops were up near New York City, and they were hoping to, to take New York City from the British, but instead it seemed the battle was calling in Virginia, and so it took six weeks for General George Washington to march his troops from New York City down to Yorktown to fight General Cornwallis for the final battle. And uh, after George Washington arrived here with his troops, they had a stealth plan. They had a better plan than the British, and they won because of French help. The French held the high ground in the naval seas, and the rivers and the Chesapeake Bay, the French were winning the battle against the British in 1781. And then the American troops came on the ground side and the ground forces won the battle. And uh, near this field, General Cornwallis of the British Empire surrendered two thirds of the British army to American troops in October of 1781. Here we are, the Battle of Yorktown. We have stood where George Washington stood and we have marched where Patrick Henry has marched his troops and said their statements of belief and courage as they fought on this battlefield. Okay, this is the second siege of the Yorktown battle. George Washington's troops moved up to the second spot and there's these trenches that have been dug. They would always quote the phrase, don't tread on me, as they fought against the British. And here's some of what it looked like with their tanks and their, uh, with their cannons. So walking through the trenches, you can see what some of the men in the Revolutionary War had to do. They had to walk carefully, guns, bullets flying, cannon, and they're safely behind this hill and looking at the positions of the orange cones, many of the British military firing at the Americans from those positions. Because George Washington and his troops fought, today we have liberty. Now we met uh, Mr. George With, who was a friend of George Washington in the city of Williamsburg today, and he said, that freedom is an attribute of nature where animals are free, but we, we cannot be free such as animals. But he said, we do have liberty with certain responsibilities and certain constrictions and rules that must be in place for society. So we're not absolutely free like the animals, but we do have liberty because politically we established a revolution against the king, whereby there would be a representative government and democracy that was not perfect at the beginning, but could be, according to the Constitution, a more perfect union as they continued to follow virtue and truth. And here you have the Battle of Yorktown that decided the fate. If we did not win here in Yorktown and the British already had New York City, we may have never become a country and Britain would have continued to rule us just like Canada. But here we are in America and the USA, United States of America with liberty and justice for all. We're all created equal with rights, inalienable rights that we're born with, the right to life, the right to liberty, and the right to pursue happiness or, and or property. Whether you're John Locke or Thomas Jefferson, depending on which phrase you like. Okay, I'm coming. Now at the third siege, we're right next to the water. So the battle was really close to the naval fleets as they walked up this embankment for the third battle. And this sign here says time, time, tide, and erosion. On your left is the British Redoubt number 10, partly reconstructed where a fragment of the the moat was found in 1956. The remainder of it, as well as parts of the adjacent works, were washed to the sea during 175 years of crumbling riverbanks.
the British were held down here from getting off the boats and setting up a fort to defend against the American attack and the French attack. It's called Readout Number 10. The Rhode Island Regiment that fought here was primarily a uh, African American regiment. And Alexander Hamilton oversaw some of this battle as secretary under George Washington. Okay, behind me is the Moore House. Now, General George Washington and General Cornwallis met together in this house to draw up the deals of surrender. And they came up with 15 points of surrender. And this is an historic house because this is where the, uh, the Battle of Yorktown was ceasing. The fighting was dying down and the two generals were meeting for the first time to find out what would be the vision for the future. They, they played British music with American and French songs as the ceremony was finished. Okay, we're walking up and approaching the area where the British laid down their weapons, and this is the Field of Surrender. It's on this spot that the British finally laid down their weapons and the Americans had won. Cornwallis's troops raised the white flag here and came forward as prisoners of war. On October the 19th, 1781. I have the mortification to inform your excellency that I have been forced to give up the post of York and Gloucester and to surrender the troops under my command by capitulation on the 19th instant as prisoners of war to the combined forces of America and France. He wrote to Sir Henry. Sir Henry Clinton received this as commander in chief of the British forces on October the 20th. General George Washington said, I have the honor to inform Congress that a reduction of the British Army under the command of Lord Cornwallis is most happily effected to the President of the Continental Congress on October 19th, 1781. And here we have the Field of Surrender. Here on October the 19th in 1781, General Cornwallis ordered all of his troops to raise the white flag and to lay down their weapons and to come forth as prisoners of war, surrendering to the American and the French, the last battle of the Revolutionary War. So this is the spot where it all finished right there. And uh, General Cornwallis did not himself come forward, but he sent his men forward to surrender Cornwallis stayed back, pleading that he was ill, and he waited a few more days to meet for the final surrender. And this is the Victory Monument marked here in Yorktown from 1781, the time we got independence and freedom from Britain, celebrating that freedom and, and liberty. The Yorktown Victory Monument. It was not until October 29th 10 days later that word finally reached Philadelphia that we had won the battle. All right, these are the beaches at Yorktown. Hi. I'm in between all the important men of Lafayette and Washington and 
all these guys, Revolutionary War times. When you're here in Yorktown, you get to meet a lot of important people like Lafayette and General George Washington making plans, shaking hands. 